everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing the artistic process of this piece of artwork called Hair Power, made in 2020 in response to my involvement with an online World Afro Day event held in September of that year, where I read poems from one of my anthologies, Hair Power, Skin Revolution, published in 2010, and spoke about Afro hair discrimination. So I'm just going to read the artistic process. As a reference for hair power, I used my own Afro comb for the design by literally drawing around it, using the comb as symbolic icon as a geometric measuring tool to sketch in a similar way a ruler was used for the marking and positioning of the design. I then lightly sketched and interspersed the remaining images at different angles so as to display them as a central, focused and unified entity. I used Crayola super tips a black V7 high tech point pen for fine lines and the constraints of an A5 portrait size frame. I later erased the frame and extended it to the size of the A4 Crawford and Black sketch pad itself. The aim was to create an illusion of a three-dimensional form and shape by layering and overlapping the afro combs, placing them in an asymmetrical stylized arrangement so as to arrive at a more dynamic feeling, one that included a sense of rhythm of comb spiralling that led the viewer's eye to view the artwork at a focal point of visual unity and to then look elsewhere. I didn't want the Afro combs to be geometrically organised in any way. I added more lines on the bottom right to represent elements of the Afro comb and to indicate movement. The idea of a black power fist evolved over a period of a few days. It made sense to incorporate this part of the image at the top so as to make a connection not just with the power of Afro hair but with the history of how the Black Power Fist became an icon overnight. When Tommy Smith and John Carlos protested on the podium at the 1968 Olympics while the US national anthem was playing, refusing to salute, instead raising their fists up as they bowed their heads to symbolise Black Power. I was only a teenager at the time, yet I felt that power, despite the thousands of miles between the US and Northamptonshire where I was living at the time. The rich, vibrant background colour scheme of gouache paint in red, yellow and green developed naturally, so as to make cultural connections with the Rastafari flag, with my Guyanese heritage, with the history of wearing my hair in dreadlocks between 2006 and 2012 and of wearing my hair in an afro in the 1970s. These Afrocentric diasporic connections supported my artistic process while making the artwork. The artistic process also included documenting the art method by taking photos at different stages and by making audio recordings to capture my thoughts and feelings. The interpretation of abstract or abstract realism artwork remains open to its viewer. Hair Power is now framed and resides with an African-Caribbean art collector, Lennox Charles, <clears throat> who I have known for many years. In 2022, I answered a call out from Birkbeck College Dandelion Journal to write a critical reflection of Hair Power, which I called Let's Talk About Hair and Art. At the time, I was studying a culture diaspora ethnicity MA at Birkbeck. The article was published in February 2024, and you can read the full article by clicking on the link in the description box below. That's all for now. Feel free to leave a comment or ask a question. Happy Easter, and bye for now.